Great legends, welcome back to the Mason Cox Show. Big episode today. Plenty happened in the AFL. The subs, yes, the super subs saved the day for quite a few teams over the weekend. We had Carlton, close nail butter loss to Adelaide. We're going to break that down. We also have West Coast Eagles get a W on the board. There's plenty going on this episode. We have no idea who the top eight is going to be, but we're going to dive into this more starting now. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we've got a big episode. I feel rested. I feel a bit rested over the week. You know, the weekend off, you know, had a little bit of a bye week for the Collingwood Football Club, but there was a lot of footy on the weekend that we're going to cover here. But without further ado, welcome, Braden, to the pod. Big, big week last week. We were mm. both sick, both struck down. Oh, it was rough. You, you a little different to me. You had yep. the gastro. I just had the man flu. The worst feeling. Getting on a flight with gastro, couldn't think of a worse experience. <laughs> just terrible. It's risky. It would oh. be, it's like akin to like going through the Burnley Tunnel. You get trapped mm. in there. Some people have a phobia of getting trapped places. That in the Westgate, like getting trapped <laughs> there, and you're like, oh, man. It was, it was so bad. And we're getting to the point where you like take off. You're not allowed to get out of your seat or anything. And it kind of like hit me. And I looked at the hostess, and I said, I'm going to need to switch seats. I'm in exit row. I swapped seats to the seat next to the bathroom because it was that bad. And she was like, if you need to get up, you can get up. And I think you could see it in my face. Like You could just see it and it was coming. And it was a rough flight, only an hour, hour and a half from Adelaide. But uh, yeah, it wasn't great. And then you got, what was it? I had the man flu, which is a bit different. I just had phlegm and stuff coming out, but I didn't have the other stuff coming out. Didn't have both ends. (laughs) Didn't have the both ends stuff, which is like... There's that horror story of the, I, oh. I reckon it happened last year where um, someone lost it on a plane and they filmed oh. it and there was like poo all the way oh, down the hallway. Don't tell me that. That's going to scar me for life. And it was just liquid. Oh. <laughs> oh, I could tell a story of someone doing that in a, a car as a kid, in my parents' car oh. as a kid. That's another story though. But we're going to get into the footy break. we got plenty, <laughs> but yeah, it's not a great, sorry to everyone listening. There's a cringe way sorry. to go about this for the sorry. beginning. Uh, but we'll go straight into what we start every podcast with the clangers of of the week. Yeah. What do you have? Uh, well, I went with Jake Stringer. Mm. He's not the clanger. I'm not no. clanging Jake Stringer. Jake Stringer had a great game on the weekend. Yeah. Uh, and he's been in great form this one year. The and, so far. and consistent. Uh, but this one, he went up and won a free kick for a 1v4, yeah. which is great. You saw all these Bulldogs players coming from everywhere. And there's Jake, one man out, gets the free kick, ball dribbles over to back to Kyle Langford. So yep. Stringer was probably a meter outside the goal square. You probably mm. want to take that kick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, Kyle Langford gets it, looks at the ump. He's like, <laughs> yeah, well, you can play on. He's oh. like, okay. Looks back, sees Jake Stringer in the square. Oh, the bloke out. that won the free oh. kick and he's like, come on. Yeah, give yeah, it to, give it it, to it's me. It's mine. Give it to the big fella. Give it to me. And he just dribbles it through. Kyle <laughs> Langford just like, nah, actually, screw you. I want it. And just kicks the goal. (laughs) And like, I mean, Jake Stringer, it took a couple of attempts after the game to be like, he got, I reckon he got interviewed like three times and it was like, what were you thinking? Like, were you upset? And he's like, nah, like (laughs) our goal, team goal or whatever. I think Bucks was going like, uh, it was a, it was real like Essendon barometer thing. Mm. Like you want the team to be like, it's our goal, not my goal. And then um, eventually they got it out of him and he's like mate I earned it I worked hard for that like just give me the ball I don't want to put it through but um no he had a good game and I mean leave it leave it to Stringer it's it's his he earned it give him the ball give him the ball so he's my clanger is Kyle Langford 100% agree there's nothing worse than seeing well if you get a free kick some midfielder just grabs it, plays on, gets smothered, and the ball goes back. Another 15, you're like, come on, man. I see it <laughs> with on, you man. all the time. <laughs> come on, man. Like, you'll draw a free kick, like, miracles happen, and then you <laughs> the the you'll see, like, Nick Dacos come through and it's oh, gone. Yeah, he's, he's gone. And by the time <laughs> no way I'm getting that pill back. you're in the background looking around for, like, where's the ball? It's my free kick. And Nick Dacos is already 30 metres away. He's kicking already it done inside two, 50. One, two. He's already kicked it inside 50, and I'm still figuring out what's going on. Oh, they were, they're they uh, the ones that cost you getting into those double figures. Yeah, I always like, there's where all my stats go. Yeah, <laughs> the, big, the big double figure games, are, yeah, just robbed. What's your uh, clanger? Well, I've got one from the, the Richmond West Coast game, which was a big game this week. I didn't really expect that, but we're going to get into that later. Now, I had Harry now, we all know, very, very uh, meticulously looked at person at the moment right now. Number one draft picked. Everyone's looking at him going, okay. They had this whole thing of the matchup of him and Dusty. They're like, oh, the two balls going at it. Reed v. Dusty. Yeah, and it just was one of those things. They asked him, was like, oh, if you get a chance to, you know, do a little fin off the Dusty to Dusty, will you do it? 
And he's like, yeah, I mean, I assume so. And then they pumped it up. They pumped it be- oh, beyond belief. You know what was the thing? They interviewed um, Barass during the week, and that <laughs> bloke is loose. Because his thing, this, I don't know they how. He pumped him up to be the next god of football. This wouldn't fly at most places, but he's like, oh, yeah, at the piss up, he, he just fights the uh, <laughs> rucks. It's like, what do you mean at the piss up? Don't say at the piss up. He bashes the rucks less on the piss up. Calm it down. <laughs> calm, calm that side down. Talk about how he's a good player. Uh, but no, on the weekend. And then there was a moment in the contest, right, that he got the ball and Dusty's in front of him. He kind of like just barely nudges him with the hand. And the commentator was like, ah, ah, da, 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 da. you know, like Leonardo DiCaprio and over from Wolf of Wall Street. Yeah. Like, da, 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 over there, over there. And then they're like, oh, man, he did the Dusty to Dusty. Incredible, incredible scenes. I can't believe it. I can't believe what I've seen with my eyes. And it was just a little brush. It wasn't really anything. It was, it was, it was as if he had, like, literally picked him up and thrown him to the ground and done a proper fend-off. Uh, but it was nothing. And it just – everyone was just waiting for that moment. They just blew it up, as media does, to be a massive ordeal. Yeah. Yeah. He was kind like of on AFL the – posted it. He's, like, like, on the on. back pedal falling over and gets the yeah. handball out or whatever. It was like he did it. He did it. I think it was more impressive last week where he got like the record for yeah. most broken tackles or whatever. And he's like, he's a teenager, bro. Mm. Like that, that was insane. I want to move this one up from the rundown, but okay, the yep. real don't argue that should have got all the attention yes. and no one's talking about it is, I call him Mikey because it's a lot easier to say. <laughs> um, what's his, Mikey Lafau? Lafau, I think Lafau. Yeah, I'm not sure if we're pronouncing it right, but, <laughs> uh, but um, the Kiwi fell. He, he absolutely... Richmond killed a bloke yeah he like tried to jump on him like a jumping spider tackle and he just held him in one hand and just threw him through the earth <laughs> it was the craziest like don't argue i've ever seen like ever yeah and um yeah but everyone just glossed over it because they're all looking for the harley reed um dustin martin like don't argue but yeah so what you're giving it to the commentators i'll give it to the commentators on harley reed versus dusty yeah, fair enough. <laughs> fair enough. Well, we'll get into the games. We got right off the bat. We got Melbourne versus Brisbane. You could say this was an upset. This is at the MCG. Brisbane, known to yeah you know, have the fortress up there, comes down away game. Melbourne at home, and Melbourne takes the L. Yeah, you could. Yeah, you could say it was an upset. It was definitely an upset. I feel like where Brisbane's at, mm. everyone in the commentary around they can't win at the G or whatever. And if you look at the score, sixty to eighty two very flat, flattering. Like yeah, Melbourne had convincing. a shot after the siren that could have brought it back to like 17, but this was an ass kicking. Yeah. Brisbane flogged Melbourne. They, like they made them look second rate. Like it was, it was a pretty dominant performance by Brisbane. Um, and didn't they handle it well? Because we'll jump straight into the Noah Ainsworth <laughs> taunting Petty, oh, yeah. which is, yeah, this I mean, they don't forget because people th- don't forget. <laughs> this thing <laughs> came up a couple of years time. ago. <laughs> we all know the incident. Uh, Petty was brought to tears after a taunt, yeah. Um, and then yeah, Noah Ainsworth, who I'm not going to lie, I had to look up to see who he was oh, because like I, I didn't know who Noah Ainsworth yeah. was. Shoot me, I think he's played 50 games. Anyway, uh, he's the big wig out there. Mm. He did a double taunt, which not a lot of people picked up because he was on the. You're a big fan of Love the on time. the mark, mm. the mark as well. You yeah. like the mark because you can't, jack. Yeah, you can't yeah. do much anymore. Well, uh, well, you could say that Petty's kind of going a bit thin in the feather department. I don't <laughs> think that's not obvious. <laughs> thin up top, yep. Uh, but he's got a bit of a landing patch at the back. And uh, <laughs> Noah Ainsworth was bent over on the mark doing circles the above halo. his head Give going the like, you're going bald back there. Oy. Then he missed. Then he gave him, oh, are you going to cry? Oh, oh. So, yeah, it it didn't go down well kind of in the Brisbane camp. Well, at least outwardly. I don't know yeah. how, if they cel- <laughs> celebrated it inwardly. But, um, yeah, it was, a, it was a big game, big win for him. Yeah. Um, you want to see him do it with a bit more, you know, respect. But lucky Neil, 250. 250, yeah. How big do you, game for him. Have you, um, you would have been... Close to him, playing in the midfield as the ruck. Yeah. Uh, how's yeah, he yeah. go about it? He's he's very good. He's one of those people, um, whenever you play against him, it's hit it away from him. Yeah. <laughs> like, tap it. <laughs> see where Neil Lockett is on the field? <laughs> see where he is in front of you? Tap it the other direction so he can't get it. Um, he's an absolute ball inside. I mean, 250 games to rack that up. I'm not sure how old he's. I think he's around 30 years old. But um, he's been a star of the game. Brownlow medalist, obviously. He's, uh, he's absolutely smashed it. So... 250 games, heck of an accomplishment, chair it off at the end, rightfully. Um, I, know. I know we have this whole thing of like, 
100, 150, 200? How do we, what do we chair off? What do we do extra? All these kind of stuff that we always contemplate, but 250, yeah, I got the clap off, which was pretty cool. And, uh, you know, to win a game that probably a lot of people didn't expect you to win. Massive win. Awesome. Awesome experience. One who looked back on fondly. Okay. So the chair ride for 250, I said yeah. not massive on it, but if you, depends where they are in their career, if you see them winding up or whatever. Both teams did the guard of honor for the yep. chair ride. I don't see that. I don't. 250. 250. You're Melbourne, right? Yep. You're Melbourne. You just got flogged on your home <laughs> deck. It's and a, you're going to, over to be like, well done, mate. Thanks for flogging oh. us. Great job. Oh, I can't believe that the Melbourne fans aren't sitting there going, yeah, good one, lucky Neil. Like, they're not sticking behind, surely. I don't think there's many Melbourne fans left no. that came after it to chair them No, off you wouldn't think so. Uh. Uh, but, yeah, it looked like Melbourne were really limping towards that buy. I reckon they're going to have to look back at the decision for this zero round mm. because I reckon a lot of teams that started the week earlier kind of limping towards this buy period. And yep. we, we saw it with a couple of teams on the weekend. The Collingwood were kind of lucky to get across the line in the end against Hawthorne. Uh, well, I think there's a lot of those teams that played the round zero were teams that made the finals and had a longer season. Except for, yeah. So it's yeah, kind of true. an interesting thought process behind that of like you have a shorter off season than the other teams that didn't make finals that wouldn't be in round zero. Yeah. Uh, if you look at the teams that kind of played in that first or the zero round, uh, most of those were teams that they wanted to kind of build anticipation, build kind of a big crowd and hype around, you know, them playing in that first game. So yeah, you can see both sides of it, but... Yeah, Melbourne bye week next week. I think Richmond also has a bye week next yeah. week, so a bit of refreshers for them. But we'll move into the next game, Western Bulldogs versus Essendon. Now we talked about Jake Stringer. Yeah. Massive game. Yeah. And uh, this one, Western Bulldogs is probably the the story out of this. Yeah. I like. I feel like I've been saying it forever, but they're, it's got to be the most frustrating team in the comp. If you go mm. for them and you look at their list and what they've got, they've got one of the most— You're saying Western Bulldogs is more frustrating than North Melbourne? Yeah. Well, like, if you're a North Melbourne fan, you know what you're in for. You expect, yeah. Okay, you're expecting you. yep. it. Bulldogs fans are, like, up and about there. You know, the projection was top eight. Probably a chance to go for top four, depending on, like, their back line is probably the question marks. But, yep. like, the forward line is, like, humming. Like, they got Rory Lobb, who they paid money and got on a contract, and he's playing in the VFL. They got Sam Darcy. Uh, they've got Jamara Hugo Hagen. They got yep. Aaron Norton. Like, they got Cody Waitman at their feet. Mm. That's a pretty crazy forward line. Pretty just potent. kick it in there. Yeah, just and, get in there. But their midfield, like they dropped McRae. He came back in. Uh, they got the Bont. They Bont. got Luba. Adam Trelaw, who doesn't get any plaudits for a bloke that's going out there and getting 37 and kicking at least a goal a week. Yeah. Um, they got Libba, who's in like career best form somehow. I don't know how he is. Tim but English is a ruckman. Like Tim English, all the, the current All-Australian ruckman. Mm. So you're looking at that and you're going, okay, like maybe the back line, like they got Liam Jones Liam down Jones, back, big deal, yeah. uh, te- uh, Jeray down back, like they got some like experience down there. People are talking about maybe moving the astronaut back, mm. um, so which is where he played all his junior footy. Anyway, I like you look at that and you go, they should be good. And you've they should have been good for the past every year since 2016, yep. really. And they're just not getting it done. And it's and oh, it's a, you can already feel it if you're a fan. I'm not even like a Bulldog supporter. And I look at this going, yeah, we're due the exact same season we had every other season where <laughs> we'll beat a really good team and then we'll lose to a mid team and we'll struggle against a low team and then we'll beat a good team. Like like the out the performance they put against Geelong last week was like yeah. outstanding. It's one team just had to win that. And unfortunately for the Bulldogs, it was Geelong. Yeah. And then this week, like Essendon, you knew they were going to be on because they stunk it up the week before. They like so you knew the pressure was coming, and then they just didn't show up. They just didn't yeah. show up. Bont only he struggled. He got seventeen. Libba was quiet, and then there was an incident with Libba, yeah. where yeah he got tackled really hard by Jake Stringer. Mm. Then uh, he went in, got a hard ball, did this three sixty, got the ball out. Yeah. And not too long after that, it kind of looked, he just fell up, pretty much yeah. face first down. Uh, Beveridge came out after the game saying, yeah, he lost his footing. I think they're talking about an ankle issue. Yeah. It yeah. just didn't look good. Have you seen the incident? I have. And it was yeah, somewhat jarring, I think, with all the kind of talk around concussion and everything else. 
And for him to just kind of stumble, hit the ground after kind of that contest, you, you automatically think, right? Like he's he's probably had his head hit at some point in the last mm. you know minute. Um, and yeah, he kind of I think he come out and the bulldogs. Someone said that he had an ankle issue and they kind of blame it on that. And then he went to concussion protocols and I think he might be missing this week, but. Uh, yeah, there's so much, I guess, attention around it. Obviously, that's going to come out, and the vision of it looked, you know, quite nasty, like of just someone kind of looking normal, and then all of a sudden it kind of hits him, and then he just kind of like stumbles and falls over. Um, I think that's it's not great vision to see. And I think obviously, like the media saw that, and you know, that came out as as obviously a talking point for the week. But yeah, you know, hopefully he's all right. I'm not really sure. Obviously, the the direction it's kind of gone as far as his health, but. You know, we always say prayers, prayers up for this kind of stuff because, yeah, you know, absolutely. it is something that can be an issue for for a long time. But, uh, yeah, Libas, he's been playing really well over the year. He's hilarious on the front bar the other day. I don't know yeah. if you saw it. So, uh, but, yeah, hopefully he's okay. But it was quite concerning vision, I think, that kind of came out of this game and probably one of the biggest talking points. I know the Western Bulldogs didn't probably play up to the potential they wanted to, but I, I still think that they're a good team. I know, like, everyone's yeah. had their comments, but, like, we're five or six you know, games into this season – and there's still a lot to play out. I know yeah. we all like have these stress and anxiety around teams playing well, not playing well, like Geelong's the undefeated and all this, you know, whatever it might be. But I'll, like you're saying, I look at their list and I was like, they're capable to do whatever they want to do. And they yeah. can, it's really up to them and the direction they're going to take um, as far as whether they make the eight or not. And I think this is a, a one off, hopefully, experience for them losing to Essendon in that way um, that they'll learn from and move on and, and be able to be better from it. I hope for Bulldogs fans, you're right. But. I think it's a tale we've all seen too much. Mm. Uh, there was a – let's not take away from Essendon because they came out and yeah. I, th- I feel like a blip for them was last week where, you know, they had that really down performance and there's no kind of, you know, glossing over that. But I feel like they're starting to build that edge that they call it, but just pressure. It's, yeah. it's really just pressure. Pressure and wins games. Pressure, then. tackles, get in their face. And – yeah, it's great. And they threw a couple of kids in, like uh, Jai Caldwell, but in particular Sam Durham. And I talk the kids, they're not kids, but yeah. like Young, younger players. You normally fall back on your senior players that have proven it and done it before. But they threw Durham in there against Bont, like going one on like head to head. Yeah. Bont finished with 17, but Durham went really well, finished in the twenties for touches, six clearances, like um, yeah, so there's it's exciting like signs for Essendon. They still don't have two meter Peter. He's going to come back mm. in, but he's going to slot in there with Big Jakey Stringer. I yep. reckon it's just Stringer's paddock. Just get oh, out of his just way. Put him deep. Todd Goldstein is like <clears throat> the Goldstein kind of experiment, if you will. As I reckon, it's been it's really good. Yeah. yeah, a lot of question marks around that whether or not he'd be able to play forward. And yeah, I think he's just providing that contest and then letting their smalls get to a, get to there and. That's sometimes what you need from a big man. So, you know, be able to bail out to him. Exciting times for Essendon fans ahead. I just yeah. we just, talked about it in the offseason, made compete. a few little, you know, movements, moved the magnets a bit, got a few different people in, made some trades. Most active in the offseason, I felt like, and now they're kind of seeing uh, the fruition of it. Yeah, just compete. All right, we'll move into the next game. We got GWS versus St. Kilda, the one point thriller for your boys, but not without some concerns. Did you see? I don't know if you saw this. Um, I think it was on bounce. Um yeah. After the game, they were, I think it was in Canberra, this game. Yep. So, and it was, uh, they're like, oh, we'll catch the flight or whatever. Uh, we're probably going to lose this game down by a fair bit, St. Kilda at the time. Yeah. Uh, so, their team, as you do, admin staff started pulling all the, you know, the branding, the all the and sponsorship all that kind of yeah, yeah, yeah. down off the wall. Oh, gosh. And then as St. Kilda just kept kicking goal, 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 they realized they were within a goal with a couple minutes left. So, they're all putting start, it back up. <laughs> start putting it back up. We might have Get the, the press, tape out. Might have the media in the rooms post game. But uh, yeah, St. Kilda did well to fight it out. Um, yeah. Caminiti kicked a goal with 40 seconds to go that kind of gave them a chance. Yeah. And then it was the super sub, Peatling. Yeah, uh, so did I, didn't he? A lot of good subs this week, which mm. we'll get to. But Peatling, going back with the flight, like flat out back with the flight, took a diving mark. It was, um, what a throwback. Brett Kirk, 2005 grand final. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Threw himself back, <laughs> took the mark, and then double leg cramped up. Oh, um, I don't know if that was just a bit of acting to um, delay the clock, but it was very yeah. much that. For all those uh, Sydney 2005 fans, you'll remember that well. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, it was, a, it was a great game. GWS, though, a mm. lot of injuries. A lot of injuries. We got Sam Taylor had is one of the big kind of Oof. concerns out of that camp. Obviously massive for them in their back line, one of the best defenders in the game. Uh, under concussion protocols, OD'd, mm. or knocked himself out. 
and uh, we're going to be out for a while. So he was unconscious for a was, fair amount of time. Yeah, it was so concerning yeah. for sure. He was going for a spoil, and it looked like a clash of heads. And then he was mm. just out for a long time. There was a bit of talk because Kingsley was coaching from the boundary line. Yep. And when that all happened, obviously the protocols kick into place. They come out with the cart, yep. uh, like safety precautions. He was able to just rally his team to the boundary line and give him a bit of a speech to be yeah, like, okay, oh, yeah. get out there, go do this. Rossi, he's up in the box. Yeah. Big rig. And he's running down. And so it took Has him- Has he gone seen Kingsley? He's like, no, I'm going to do that. Yeah. <laughs> he's essentially that. So, but it took him, they timed it. That time, oh, that wow. took him about two and a half minutes to get from the box down to the ground. So <laughs> Kingsley's got the head start on him. You can say a lot oh. in two and a half minutes. So they reckon it's an unfair advantage. Nothing that, would make me laugh more than seeing, <laughs> seeing old Rossi doing stary, stadium stairs yeah. at the MCG <laughs> practicing for this moment. That's what they're saying. At the MCG, oh. it would have taken him about five minutes. It's quite oh, a hike at the MCG. Oh, have cool. you ever sat in the box? Yeah, no. <laughs> oh, man, it's scary. <laughs> I've asked her and I was told no. And yeah, no uh, there's fair a, call too, there's a height limit on the, yeah. on the box. But uh, they also had... Canelio, Kelly, Briggs, all injured in the game. All yeah. big dogs. Briggs big has dogs. been, man, been he looks. Good, yeah. He's a, solid. He looks solid fit, boy. man. He's yeah. like, I don't know, like, he's just big. He's just like mm. a midfielder, but bigger. He's thick. Thick <laughs> fella. Thick boy. He is a thick fella. But yeah, a few injuries out of that one. We'll move on to the next one. This is a thriller. Now, this, I did watch this game, and it was, I feel like, the game of the round. It was fun. Carlton versus Adelaide. Going into this game, look. I think we said it last week. Adelaide, good luck. <laughs> we were taking the piss. We said, get it out of the 30s. If you could score 40s, 50s, we'd be laughing. They scored 100. Yeah. Scored 100, which was two points more than the Carlton Football Club. Jeepers. Now, Carlton being undefeated, obviously going into this game, uh, a lot of people looked at it as a, a shoe-in of a, a W on the, on the win column. But, yeah, they get the loss versus Adelaide over at Marvel Stadium and... There was one person that saved the game at the end. A old ex-player, a f- uh, ex-teammate of mine, Mark Keane, the Irishman. How good. Oh, he's gone clock. He's playing some good footy. He is, yeah, yeah, yeah. He got, I know he got, uh, I think he had a head knock earlier in the year. Yeah. But uh, he's come back over there in Adelaide. He's, he's proven himself and uh, he's going pretty well. So shout out to little Keeney. Good kick. Big Big body, big body oh, defender. He's a tough fellow. We used to get in scuffles in uh, training quite a bit. Uh, uh, few, but it, few separations between myself and Keeney from other teammates. I'll I say that. I bring up like a stat. You know, like there's a stat that always gets. I don't know who the statistic, statisticians mm. are that work at some of these like broadcasters, but I reckon they bring up one and then like everyone runs with it. And they last week when Adelaide got pumped and they yep. only scored thirty, they brought up a stat and it was like, oh, apparently Adelaide win like. 100% of games they score 100 in and then they lose games that they don't score 100 in. And it's like, no shit. Like, uh, I score 100, gosh. any team's probably going to win. Like, 100's a pretty yeah. high score to get. So, How anyway. long do you think it took them to rifle through the statistics <laughs> to find that one? I don't know <laughs> what genius dragged that one out, but here we go, Adelaide, 100, uh, and they got the they win over... 100 uh, on the dot. Look at that go, but tons came out of this. Another super yeah. sub, Sam Berry came on, Betty. kicked the match winner. He's got the noodle hairs, the straw. Yeah, he's yeah. very good. Very good, very, very good. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, shake your head like everyone else is. From very to good us. to very bad, because we got Owies who... Oh. Had a chance to win the game oh, for Carlton, running in. And I reckon every Carlton fan was already celebrating because yeah, this is the, it, baby. they're the tight game kings. They're the mm. new Collingwood, uh, as they like to call themselves. Uh, and oh. <laughs> and oh, he's got the run in and he kicked that much grass. <laughs> it was, I don't know what oh. he was. It was rough. He was kind of under pressure, but he was really running into what's an open goal square and just yeah. kicked all the grass and unfortunately, couldn't get Carlton across the line. It's a Marvel for, Stadium turf, you know. It, 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 it <laughs> sneaks up on you. Um, uh, there was more incidents out of this because yeah. Matt Crouch coming in like a freight train. Freight train. But elbow tucked, lined him up, put him in his sights, headshot, bang, and he gets a week. Yeah. For almost putting someone in a wheelchair, which so I don't know where we're at with that. Um, I won't. Hardball gets you don't know. Well, hardball get. Implies that you're going for the ball. Yeah. You see, that's this the problem. Was, this is where the kind of because the Matt Crouch was. was all man, killed him, and then the ball was just there by circumstance. He's yeah. like, oh, beauty, no one wants this. Mine. I'll take it. Off he goes. <laughs> so, yeah, I don't know. A week for that seems like a massive missed opportunity. I don't want to, like, put players in it. Mm. You could take the names out of it. Um, but just that 
that action, terrible, terrible action that could result mm. in massive long-term damage. And just the lucky fact that it didn't shouldn't yep. excuse the action. You should go, none of that. That's yeah. stupid and get that out of our game. But I don't know. You have to be cautious, obviously. Like if you go in, you know, at pace, like he did, yeah. like you have to make sure you get body. Like that, you can't, yeah. you can't, if you miss it, it's going to be weeks, you yeah. know, to that point. So it is one of those things, obviously, like the faster you go, the harder the hit's going to be. So if you really kind of are, you know, there's that moment in footy where the ball's like kind of in someone else's, probably like 60, 40, right? 100%. And you're kind of off and you're like going at full pace and you're like, well, I don't want to back out of this, but I still want to go for the ball. And you kind of smash into the man at the same time. You have to make sure you kind of get that body whenever you hit it. So, yeah, it's uh, obviously we talk about every week. The, the Anything that's head high now is going to be looked at as a week. And, um, yeah, this is a, this was one of the, I guess, question marks over the weekend was this crouch bump. Yeah, and that's, I think, was the telltale signs. Where, as mm. fans, you get told to look for the telltale signs, like with a bump. What do you do? Yep. Don't leave the ground. You don't leave the ground. Don't do a picket. You don't hit the head. If you hit the head and you've left the ground, telltale sign, you're going to get weeks. Yep. Well, this was, you're coming in, you know you're going to be second to the ball. Mm. So you got to adjust your action on the way in. He yep. didn't do Start that and only got a week. I still feel like it should have been more. Anyway, plenty out of this. Tex Walker kicked four, the Texan. Old Tex. That's not a, that's not a bag, is it? Five. Not four. Five's Five. a bag. Five's a bag. Oh, also, had Kerno kicked four. That's Rankin kicked three, 23 touches. Yeah, but his game was good. Dynamic, Rankin. Yeah. I reckon, oh, he had that one on the line? Like, yeah, it, was, it kind of looked like Carlton had it, and then all of a sudden he got, like, bubbled out the back, and he's just thrown it on his boot and kicked it through yeah. the line. He's slowly, like, we. he's always had those flashes of, like, brilliance. freaking brilliance. Yeah. But, like, it was more about consistency, and he's putting in one hell of a season so far. Mm. Consistent, even though Adelaide's been a bit down. Now, your boy, Sam Walsh. Walshy! Tell us about his, his game, because it was – he. For everyone who doesn't know, he's, he's been out with a broken back. Mm. As Mike Tyson would say, it's it's spinal. <laughs> it's really it's spinal. spinal. Uh, uh, so, yeah, he's been done, dead, yeah. buried. Anyway, he comes back, and I think he has an okay game. 34 touches, 13 tackles, 8 clearances. I think you could take that as a good game. That's, that's, 13 tackles. That's, that's crazy. Solid. That's solid. At some point. Maybe around the eight tackle mark, you got to be looking at your teammates. Going, is that? I mean, am I the only one out here we, tackling? Do we go triple doubles here? You know, do you do that? Oh. I know in basketball you do triple doubles, but I feel like in footy, if you're getting over ten tackles, like you should be looking at the the triple double range. He needed for two footy. more clearances. I know, I know, but uh, <laughs> now he had an amazing game on return. A lot of Carlton fans out there waiting for this guy to come back and play for him. See, is it? A big part of their machine and what they go, uh, how they go about it. So it was good to see him back doing it um, at his best. And it was an important game for him to be back. I know, unfortunately, they lost, but he's definitely one of the reasons they were still in this game. So It's crazy the game that he had, and then you had Kerno kicking four, mm. Harry kicked two. Yeah. Still but take, they looked dangerous still at the take end. The like, out. the end, it was back, forth, back, forth, back, forth, back, forth. It kind of reminded me, like, Carl, sorry, Collingwood versus Essendon, Jamie kicks it on the siren. I was just sitting there thinking, like, this might happen. Like, mm. whether it's Adelaide or it's Carlton. And the, uh, the always thing whenever he hit the ground, I was like, oh, this might be the sealer, you know, and then misses it. And then all of a sudden Adelaide goes down to the other end. It was just, it was an intense game where it was close one way, then close the other way, and then close one way, and then close the other way, and back and forth, back and forth. It was entertaining to watch. I did have the Collingwood feeling there for a moment where it was like Adelaide kicked the goal with Sam Berry. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, there's, there's too much time on it's the clock. Time, yeah. Carlton's going to get it done. And yeah, they just yeah. couldn't get it done because always owies. Uh, but we go into the Gold <laughs> Coast game. In we go into the Gold oh, Coast game man. because your boys. boys, your boys, the Gold Coast Let's sons. Go! Look at this. I don't know. Correlation causation. Mm, uh, they scored over 100. Oh. And they won. 109 to 56. That's weird. Hawthorne. My That's Gold weird. Coast sons up. I'm telling stat. you, we're going well. We're going well. Let's go. So the Gold Coast Suns community. I don't even I don't say this correctly. It's so much of a mouthful. You got to be careful when you say uh, Gold Coast Suns community because <laughs> something can be wrong. Some Dwayne Russell's C bomb action could come Whoa. out. Uh, but we had a super sub again. Yeah, we had Dave Swallow, absolute veteran for the club at this stage. Yep. Uh, came on and kicked three goals in the fourth quarter. Oh yeah, that's that's a nice little top up, right? Like you already beat Hawthorne by a decent amount, and you're going. Yeah, that's good to kind of come in, you know, or the game's pretty much ready to go, ready to seal up. I'm just going to get a few out the backs, you know? If you're one of these super subs that come on, you're, you're Sam Berry or you uh, David Swallow and you're winning the game or you're kicking three in the last quarter, you know how the subs have to do that extra running? That's exactly what I was going to say. This is the best part of, like, coming on and being that sub – 
you know you don't have to do the running after. Yeah. Like, you, you don't have to do the top-up stuff after. You're not sitting there while everyone's in the background doing the post game interviews and stuff, and you're doing laps around the MCG, just getting extra Ks in because you only ran three during the game. That's the best part of getting activated as a yeah. sub with plenty of time left. That's what I reckon. If you're uh, Sam Berry, you're like, mate, I'm tired from winning the game. <laughs> <laughs> I can't be out there doing the extra running. Uh, King came on, kick 4-4. Yeah. Close to a bag. Could, could have been huge. Four is still good. Mm. We like four. Noah Anderson, 36 and a goal. That's yep. that's delicious. Uh, Guinea watch. We always look at Guinea. Uh, Guinea yeah. kicked his goal on the run. Nice little, um, it's a snap, I guess, uh, <laughs> from about 40 out, which is a big yep. one, and then through the dart, even though his team was getting yeah, I thought flogged. Was, you told me it was a dart today. I thought it was a beer pong. I think mean, yeah. that was just a bit more lofted, like a beer pong, yeah, but maybe sure. it wasn't. Yeah, it was a different dart to the uh, Collingwood dart. The Collingwood dart was like a real looper. Mm. This one was more of a straight, yeah, like dart, but didn't help because they got pumped. Um, <laughs> and Sam Mitchell came out, and you could just tell he's like, flat. "This is the moment where coaching really kicks in," and he mm. was flat as attack, and he was just disappointed. Said yeah. it was probably the worst performance the boys have put up uh, in his time. I think, mm-hmm. or even quite some time. But, yeah, Gold Coast Suns, all for the winners here. Oh, yeah. Uh, big win. You don't want to go up there at the, uh, what do you call like the, it's, I like the portraits because it makes sense, but when, the sun, uh, yeah, if you go up and verse the suns, you're going to get <laughs> burnt, something, something, uh, okay, something. Yeah, we'll, we'll workshop that. We'll workshop that. that. <laughs> uh, we'll go to the next game, the Port versus Frio. Now, Port Adelaide got the three-point win over Frio, 66 to 63. Mm. And this was another close one. Jason Horn Francis kicked the game winner, a little snap around the corner, oh, interviewed after exciting. the game. Asked, how did it feel? You know, how were you feeling in the moment? You know, he goes, I was pooping myself. <laughs> Which sounds <laughs> I think he was covering good. for another word that starts with S-H-I and then finishes with uh, something else. But, uh, I think yeah. we're like, we're fine with shitting. We're yeah. fine with <laughs> shitting. <laughs> it's like. Channel 7 was like, just make sure no cussing. Kids are still watching like, their ups. I'd re- uh, I reckon I'm more disgusted by pooping, really. <laughs> this is a wor- weird word. Uh, but yes, he, he did close the game out for a massive moment. Uh, got the sealer for him. And Jason Warren Francis, a lot of media attention of over him over the last kind of couple of years. And I think now he's really kind of starting to blossom as a footballer and yeah. everyone's looking at him as the real deal. I know there's a lot of questions, obviously, the North Melbourne and stuff. And then coming over to, to Port Adelaide and a lot of criticism on the way it kind of was all handled. But I think now you're looking at it and you're seeing how he's playing going, yeah, that was probably the right de- right decision. I think it was win-win in the end if you look at it. Mm. Horn Francis is, like, he's already really good now. You know what my favorite part about Horn Francis is? His name. I like Horny no. Frank. Horny Frank. Socks up. The double socks, socks up. up. Old school look, man. I'm all for it. Credit to him. I know you're listening. <laughs> Just you know keep what? it up. We were talking about Lockie Neal. Not a Ruckman either. Doesn't no. need to. <laughs> we were talking about Lockie Neal before, and he said that he has to get the low socks because he can't fit the big socks over his calves. Big calves. Wow. And um, I think to- Tomahawk's in that same boat, like big calves. I can't, can see Tomahawk. Can't that, that fit the sense. full socks. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Who's the biggest calves down at the pies? Big calves. Brody Marachek has the biggest just stars big we've ever legs, seen. Oh, just the big tree trunks. Yeah. Uh, another one that came out of this, the Dixon back and forth with Ken Hinckley. Yeah, we love Hinkers, and I yes. think he knows how to fire the big beast up because mm. he just went down there and he was prodding him. You could see him at the break, and he was just – there was a bit of back and forth, mainly one way from Ken Hinckley. From Ken, yep. uh, and then – you could see Charlie turned around and there was steam coming out of his nose and out of his ears and Ken Hinckley turned around with a smile. <laughs> He's like, going, oh, I know exactly what I've done. I can't like, wait to see it. Oh, he just prodded the, poked the bear yeah. and then sent him out there. <laughs> it's it. like... You just put gasoline on the fire. <laughs> imagine being the, um, the defender lining up on Charlie Dixon and you see him come back just steaming. You're like, oh, I thought I've held him pretty quiet to this point. <laughs> It's probably one of those things where you go for the handshake and Charlie's just going for the yeah. full bump. And just, ah, we're back into it, yeah, boys. Yeah, but I love it. I love uh, Charlie Dixon. But, mm. yeah, he responded, had a good game after that point. So, yeah, I think Hinkers knows how to get the best out of his uh, yeah, players. Yeah, he's, he's had quite a bit of time with Charlie, so I know uh, he would know his his character well and what kind of makes him hyped up and what kind of, you know, there's different players need different kind of love, right? Does Some Flyer need... do different stuff for each player? Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, 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 different stuff for different players. Um, what are you like? But as a coach, cuddled? You are you to. like cuddled? It's like oh. um, he wouldn't have a crack at me unless I really deserved it. I feel like yeah. yeah. Uh, when I have gotten this, not like a crazy spray, I think of the sprays of like you know um, <laughs> some of the other people I've seen throughout <laughs> history of AFL, and it's yeah. not it's not those. It's not the Paul Ruse on the phone, you know, like yeah, yeah. calling you down. But um, 
Yeah, it's it's different for each player. I think I'm probably more of the the relaxed, chilled out one. I think it's also because whenever you yell at me, I'm just kind of like, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, okay. All Sweet. right. Cool. I got you. I'll do Sweet. that. I'll do I'm that. trying. Okay. Yeah, you can't I'm not yell the guy who goes, oh, let's go, coach. Yeah. <laughs> you can't. You can yell at me all you want. It's not going to make me better. <laughs> it's like, I'm doing it. I'm trying my best. I'm trying my best. <laughs> like, I don't have the levels to, like, have some other angry bloke comes out and just starts uh, ripping people up. I do love it, though. Bruzzy always comes up to me pregame and, like, gets me hyped up because he's one of those energetic I feel fellas. like Bruzzy could hype up. Like, if yeah. you. You just give him a little bit and he goes yeah. full fledged with it. I love I it. I like the guys that are like, I'll show you. They're, oh, surely I'll they're the you. easiest to coach because you go, mate, you're having the shittest game. <laughs> like, oh. Turns around and wants to kill someone. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, we're going to the next match, Geelong versus North Melbourne. Now, Cats, undefeated. Mm. Ooh, now yeah, Like, and not even, like... Killing it, too. They're doing it pretty easy. To be fair, haven't had the hardest run to this point. Mm. Uh, so there's there's still... There's two undefeated teams left. Yeah. Uh, and I feel like Geelong, they've got a couple of testers to come up. Yeah. Um, we'll see where they're really at. We've been saying that about a few teams, like uh, Essendon and St. Kilda. We're still... I don't know. They're all over There's the a shop. lot of stuff of like, you know, teams you think would win losing, mm. and there's still a lot to be kind of filtered out, I feel like. There's not a clear top eight no. by no means this year. No, it's still going. Uh, so Geelong absolutely murdered North. Mm. Uh, Jez Cameron, obviously, Licks his lips was always going to be the main culprit <laughs> because Hawkins out. Hawkins yeah. out late. Uh, so Jez kicked six, 21 disposals, 11 score involvement. So he pretty, mm, pretty much good. <laughs> touched everything that led to a score. But to be fair... Well, he's kicked six goals. What do we say for Jezza? Oh, oh. Jezza. No. Oh, no, the, um, the, when he did the grand final and his celebration was like... Uh, <laughs> unreal. So That's good. Best celebration. Got it in Hearing? super slow motion. Nah, it'd be even better if he actually did it to a beer on the sidelines. I, I mean, they were up by yeah. that much from I Sydney. Like, I think he could have. I, I think he's talked about it before, but when he cracked it in slow-mo... Although it's not a real can, I feel like you could see frost coming off it. It was, it was that uh, oh, it was just amazing. Sweat, just sweat yeah. So, yeah. So he, I don't know. Everything he touched turned to gold. Uh, yeah. And yeah, I don't know. I think this is more of like North. I feel should be further down the path. Like they've been yeah. rebuilding for multiple coaches and multiple years now. Yeah, we need to see a bit more promise. They've got. It's not like they're just running out there with like soup cans. Like they've mm. got a pretty good young list. So we will see fluctuations, but we need to see some upward trajectory. We need to see some wins. I feel bad for you know, like poor Ben Mackay, who's now across at um, Essendon. Essendon. Yeah, he had he played for nine years and had eight wins. Mate. That is rough. Oh, that's oh. so rough. So he's probably going to cover that in one year with Essendon. That's crazy, I think. And now, like, North is still there. Like, yeah. they're still there. It's Yeah, it's it must be painful for their senior players that are like, come on, we need these kids to start blossoming. Yeah, you'd have to be, as a senior player there, you'd be going, okay, well, we always are refreshing. So it yeah. seems like I feel like I'm always on like the, am I getting too old to be here and still, you know, yeah. I'm like you have to provide the leadership for the kids. So if you're not a leader there as an older older player, they're probably looking to get rid of you and just keep filtering through people who are going to be, you know, career players for them. Yeah. So it'd be an interesting thing being older there. But it is, you know, credit to the Cats. They're 5-0, and first time since 2017 that Cats have been there. And this is the funny thing, right? Like the Cats – didn't make finals. Didn't make finals last year after winning a grand final. So they had one now they're five year. and zero, oh, and it's like, whoa, hold up! Like, was maybe some of the injuries and stuff they had last year the reasoning they weren't, you know, in the top eight at the end of the year, and they still have that talent that's on that list. Um, you know, we're looking at the cats of twenty twenty two rather than the the cats of twenty twenty three, which they're going to make the top eight. Well, they were criticised for having the slow start last year, mm. which you know most people just dismissed. But you know, at this stage last year, they were in way worse shape than they are now. Yeah. And it took them a long time to get back on the road, and then they just couldn't get it back. So they've had a way sharper start to the year, and maybe yeah. that was as a result of the slow start last year. But, yeah, they're absolutely killing it at the moment. Well, let's, let's – yeah, they're going really well. speaking of killing – Yeah, speaking of killing it, uh, our West Coast Eagles. Wow. Did not see it coming. Wow. Did not see it coming. Get the dub in West Coast – in front of their fans at home versus Richmond. And it started terribly for them. Hey, you know what they did? Kicked over 100 points. They it did. It's pretty crazy. <laughs> you wouldn't believe it. They um, got a W. It started with Richmond kicked the first few of the game. And it yeah. was like, Ooh. are they going to dish this up against Richmond? 
at home, like, mm. you got to fire a shot. And did they ever? Because they just kept piling on the pain. Uh, Harley Reid watch every week, 27 touches, kick the goal, and don't argue, Dusty, no, which up. we touched on, on at the you? start of the uh, podcast. <laughs> Massive uh, thing. Dusty, you know, like Dusty gives a shit. He <laughs> does not care. He's <laughs> like, whatever, dude. I'm getting paid. Uh, Jake Waterman, who, you know, is yep. a West Coast Ford. West Coast Ford's been a bit depleted mm. over the um, with Oscar Allen going yeah. down at the start of the year, but uh, yeah, he bobbed up and kicked six goals. Six goals, eighteen disposals. Uh, I'm not sure what the Waterman is. Yeah, oh, the, <laughs> so, I mean, you got to have a sample. Yeah, uh, like it's a oh, the sprinkler. Sprinkler. Jake, what is it? Yeah. some ASMR for everyone that's out a good, that's, a, that's a pretty good one. <laughs> oh, that, was, that was awesome. That was pretty good. Nailed that. Um, <laughs> the highlight of the game, uh, except for the, obviously, Mikey LaFeyre with his don't argue to yeah. death, uh, he kicked three goals, 12 touches, probably had to do mm. too much. For, He's actually one of my favorite players this year to watch. Fast, good yeah. kick, strong exciting player yeah. uh, but one of the old dogs he's getting mm. to be an old dog now um, Nick Floston yeah he just took one of the all time speckies and the best part about it was he did not land on his feet you got to take the big hang and then go down on your side mm. uh, took it all the way to the ground did yep. all the check mark things to be an absolute hanger minus getting pumped at home so the commentary is a bit so so um that's important yeah uh, the commentary with mark of the year is almost just as important, important as the mark which is what i think affected jeremy Howe because he was taking so many marks the commentators were just like oh yeah there's how another one Sweet. another one not even surprised just yeah, yeah that's that's what he does every week like, come on you gotta give it something uh, but um yeah massive hang uh, yeah. by him over over there in the west unfortunately richmond couldn't get it done but as we said mm. uh they Go into a much needed buy, yeah. have a break because their team is ravaged by injury. They, yeah. they yeah, hardly yeah. got anyone left out there. But it is it is a credit to West Coast. I know we always uh you know, you see them in North Melbourne and everyone kind of puts them together as how many wins they're gonna get this season. It's good for them and I think their motivation going through the year to get a win on the board early. So you yeah. get that pressure of, Oh my gosh, we haven't won a game yet, we haven't won a game yet, we haven't won a game yet every single week. That gets thrown out now. Now yeah. you've kind of got that put behind you. You can go forward and say, all right, cool, let's build on this. Yeah. I think that's massive for him. So credit to West Coast, beating Richmond by a decent margin there, over almost 40 points uh, in the West in front of their home fans. It would have been a, a you know a shining light to see what's been a rough couple of years. It was nice. It was nice. A feel-good moment. Mm. Well, that is. That's that's it for the first episode of two. Obviously, we, we have another episode coming out later this week on Thursday, the preview. But the other clubs that didn't play over the weekend, Collingwood and Sydney. We, we got need the them bar. back. Cause we it was, need them back. It was boring. Like, oh. A lot of close results, but, you know, when your team's not playing, Mace. Yeah, it's it's a different feel, isn't it? It's a bit of a different feel. Yeah, well, you were. I enjoyed it. You were I enjoyed occupied. the weekend. Were it was occupied. fun. Hey, I, I mean, I had a great weekend, mate. We're going to get into it in the next episode, mate. Okay. You're going to make fun of what I'm wearing, apparently, is not acceptable. So yeah. we're going to get into that in the next episode. It's coming out on Thursday, so make sure you set your calendars. Um, click the download. I think it's the, what is it, the subscribe? If you yeah. click the subscribe, we'll come yeah. up more often. So whenever we do have a new episode out, yeah. you'll know. So make sure There's you hit that. You can hit a bell. Hit the bell. I think hit it is. Hit the rating. You may as well. You're already hit the there. Five stars. Hit the five stars. Oh, we're not Give telling you five stars. But yeah. if this isn't five stars, I don't know what is. <laughs> uh, but yeah. And then go over social channels. Like them. Share that. You know, jump in. Jeez, love it. Braden puts a lot of work in the background for oh, it, so make sure you give him plenty of love on that. And shout out to the guy I saw wearing the Mason Cox Show merch yeah. at dinner last night. You're an absolute legend. <laughs> but that is it for the first episode, everyone. Thank you so much for listening. Like I said, make sure you, you check out the Thursday episode that's coming out, and uh, we're going to do a preview of everything. But that is it from last weekend's round. Have an incredible week, and we'll talk to you soon. Peace. Yeah.